Lesbians, still gods. Gays, still gods. Bisexual, still gods. Transgender, still gods. Let's go. School Heart, aka Tiffany, if you are watching this on Facebook. This is episode four of Sitting in Yo Pew, a church review. I want to say thank you to everybody that took time out to watch episode three, where I went to St. Sabina Church, where the pastor is none other than Father Flager. But guys, as promised, I'm out of the South Side. I'm no longer on the South Side. Thank you, God. <laughs> So guys, I also told you that I would be doing churches besides mega churches. So that means I would be going to controversial churches, churches that I've heard about in the media, and churches that spark my curiosity and may spark yours as well. So <laughs> my curiosity sparked me all the way to Summit, Illinois. Yes, I said Summit, Illinois. The church I went to was Pillar of Love Fellowship where the pastor is none other than Bishop Phyllis. The church is located at 7438 West 62nd Place in Summit, Illinois. Once again, that's 7438 West 62nd Place in Summit, Illinois. So how is this church controversial or different than any of the other churches? Well, Bishop Phyllis is a female, and we know that a lot of denominations do not recognize female pastors or female leaders. Also, um, Bishop Phyllis is a lesbian. So this is an, an inclusive church, and I'm sorry, I messed it up, an inclusive church, which means they welcome the LGBTQ family. Uh, Bishop Phyllis has been out for more than 20 years and has been the pastor of Pillar of Love Fellowship for 14 years. She started the church in 2003 under the leadership of none other than, and let me get that name correct because I always do this, and none other than other, under the leadership of Bishop Yvette Flunder uh, and is a part of the Fellowship of Affirming Ministries, which is T-F-A-M, if you want to look that up. Once again, that's the Fellowship of Affirming Ministries. Now, I know about Bishop uh, Flunder uh, from watching a documentary on uh, Bishop Carlton A. Pearson. Uh, Pearson, if anybody remembers, uh, was basically um, uh, a part of a denomination. I believe they were Pentecostal. I believe he was Pentecostal. Well, he changed his message and changed his sermon. And basically, they thought that there was a no-no and they kicked him out. And Bishop Yvette Flunder was the first to welcome him into her church um, as a lesbian woman. And since then, they've just been growing. And so Bishop Phyllis is a part of that community. Now, churches start at 11 a.m., and y'all know me, this was really, really early for me compared to the last three services I was able to go to at 1 and 12 o'clock. So, and not to mention that it is further from me than all of the other churches as well. So, y'all already know. <laughs> it was a push to get up this morning, but I made it on time. And actually, I was... Um, late but the service when I entered the door the services were just starting because they had a little bit of trouble uh, Bishop Phyllis speaks at another church and so she had just gotten two pillar of love um right when I got there so um like I told you guys in previous reviews there is a way that I critique or I review these churches as the first time visitor so I will leave that list right here If you want to know specifically how I do it, please go back to episode one to take a look okay, at Okay, so I walked in the church thinking I was going to be extremely late, and I actually walked in on time, which was really good. But because I was really, really new, everybody kind of locked eyes on me. And it was so cool because uh, Bishop Phyllis 
immediately came up to me and hugged me and welcomed me to the church. And then another pastor also came and hugged me. And then um, her wife, uh, Vicki, I believe that is her wife, Vicky actually came and hugged me. Now, I will say this. Um, my father is a barber and had cut Phyllis's hair a number of times and had cut Vicky's hair a number of times. I had not met them, uh, but uh, when they found out who my father was, I received a whole lot of love. And so I was most definitely welcome in and other members started to get up and welcome me into the service. And it just felt really homey and really cozy and really nice. Um, after um, I was welcome, uh, church started. Uh, they started with praise and worship. And the one thing that sticks out to me is the person that was playing the organ actually sounds like Larnell Harris. And I know some of you guys may not be familiar with him. He was really popular in the 90s, sung really well. My mother used to play his albums out, but that's what he reminded me of. And so praise and worship was very, very good. They had two people that led praise and worship besides the uh, organist. Um, and they just did your, your regular worship, praise and worship songs, um, old school songs, um, songs that I'm most definitely familiar with. And so I was able to lift my hands and get to work up worship. There was no distractions uh, at this service because there wasn't any praise dancing going on. And so my ADD did not kick in. And so I thoroughly enjoyed their worship. Um... Today is also, well, uh, when you see this video, it will be Monday, but um, actually today is the day that most people, or most black people, do communion, which is the first Sunday, and so um, Pillar of Love is no different, and they did, um, they did their communion, and what was so significant about their communion I will have to say this. It was like one of the best communions that I've ever been to. The um, assistant pastor uh, was the one who did the communion. And one of the things that he said was that the communion reminded him of how God saves. Um, and how, you know, even during the communion time, he said he imagined communion not being a somber event. Uh, but being the Last Supper, not being a somber event, but being uh, really joyful and how in the midst of that joy, God presented them the bread and the wine. And he said, this is my body and this is my blood and, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm saving you. I'm giving it to you. And what he related that to is, you know, uh, the thing that's going on with Hurricane Harvey, that it didn't matter the person's sexuality. It didn't matter what color there were. You know, people just needed to be saved. And all of that was blown out the window. If somebody is stuck in their, was stuck in their house, somebody came to get them. And they didn't ask them, you're not, you're, you're not gay, are you? Or you're black. I, I, I can't do black people. I'm just going to do white people. I, I, you're white. I'm only going to do black people. You know, it, that was just out of the window that, you know, if you needed to be saved, you're saved. Even... And though you've done things that you shouldn't have done and messed up and, you know, just how Jesus saved and how the Last Supper just reminded him of, of God's saving power, that you're worth saving, that you're worth um, knowing who he is and you are the reason why he came. And it was just the best communion that I've ever been to. I've ever okay. been to. Okay, and then after communion came number three, the message by Bishop Phyllis. Now, Bishop Phyllis uh, spoke from Romans 12, 9 through 21. And basically in that scripture, Paul basically gives instructions to Christians to love your enemies, to try to do good to others, to um, give what you can to people, even your enemies. If you want to look at it and you want to read it, I'll list it below here. But uh, she didn't speak very long, which is so cool because a lot of pastors will say, I won't be before you long. And before you know it, you have been in there for two hours, your stomach is growling, you're thinking about Popeyes and you ain't out of there yet. Pastor Phyllis, when she says you're not going to be here long, she literally means you are not going to be there long. And so she basically 
was very raw and real and uncut. And she just basically said, like, I have difficulty with this. I can say that I'm good at this part. I'm good at this part. I'm good at this in the Bible. But there are times where loving people who are hard to love is hard for me. And I just I'm still through the process. I'm still dealing with it. And I can most I can most definitely attest to that. And I can most definitely say that she's right. Like there are parts of the Bible I pass with flying colors. And there are other parts of the Bible that I just have not gotten a hold to that are still a work in progress. And so I love that she was very honest and raw. I love how proud she was of herself, of her heritage, of who she was. And so I completely enjoyed her message. I most definitely have, I most definitely received the message from, from her. And that is to continue to work towards the things that God wants me to work towards. That's in his word that I need to be continuously getting together and getting right. And so I loved their message. I loved her message. Now, number four, which is their community outreach. They are in Summit, Illinois. Uh, she just told me, uh, actually, um, Yvette, uh, her uh, significant other, told me that they will be starting their Tuesday night uh, Feeding the Needy again. Uh, they have been doing it for a number of years, but they had to take a slight break. But in the upcoming weeks, they will be uh, starting that uh, program again. So if you live in the Summit area or, or you know of somebody who may be in need of food at least once a week, please tell them to go to Pillar of Love and get them something to eat. Uh, later on in the year, she also told me that they will be uh, housing homeless the homeless once a week. Uh, she would like to expand that to um, more days, but as of right now, because of what they can handle, it'll be just once uh, a week. Uh, last week, they also uh, did school supplies for the kids that are gearing up to go back to school um, after Labor Day, so in a couple of days. And so that's their community outreach. Um, if there's any more information, I will post the website, the link to that below so that you can check uh, things out yourself. But they have a great community outreach going on. And of course, they do participate in LGBTQ rights and things of that nature. And uh, if there's, if you have any questions about that, like I said, I will leave their information below. So let's get to the good meaty meaty part. I know that you think that I have a lot of things to say, but I will say this because I don't have a lot of things to say about this. Um. My goal is to just be a first-time visitor of these churches. I am there to see if I'm going to be welcome. I am going to, I'm going there to see if I can participate in your praise and worship. I'm going to see if I can hear a great word. This is no different. This is no different. And I think that is where the confusion lies. The confusion lies in what you think may be happening in these churches. And it's funny about what we think. It's funny, sorry, what we think. Um, and it's funny because a lot of time what we think is not the truth. Um, I even had somebody tell me when I revealed to them that I was thinking about going to an LGBTQ church. Um, one of the things that they said was, well, aren't you afraid they're going to hit on you? And I was like, how do I even know that they gonna think I'm cute? Like, how how do I know that that's something they're gonna do anyway? That shouldn't stop me. Like, when I go down the street, sometimes men holler at me, or sometimes I've been around women who have, and it's not like they've taken anything from me. And so I don't know where we get these ideas from. But ideas can be handled one or two ways. You can keep them going in your head, or you can find out for yourself. And I think a lot of times what we do is we don't want to find out for ourselves. We want to keep the ideas that we have because they're solid and they go with what we believe. Um, and so I went to this service because I wanted to break the myth of everything that I had heard previously from other pastors, from other churches about going to an LGBTQ church. 
No, I wasn't hit on. It's so stupid that I even have to go there. But no, I wasn't hit on. And no, nobody was like making out in front of me. And none of that stuff. And it shouldn't even be happening at churches that you guys consider heterosexual. None of that should be happening anyway. If I'm there for worship, you shouldn't be tugging down your husband anyway. And so, I mean, as far as I am concerned about this review, um, I really want for people to go to these types of churches, support these churches, and love on people. At the end of the day, they're still gods. <laughs> At the end of the day, I'm they're still gods. why there is a need for these churches because all churches should be inclusive anyway. Um, but I, I most definitely see the need for them. And my cousin actually you know, uh, put out a question on Facebook as to why there's so much emphasis on the gay, lesbian, transgender, bisexual lifestyle and not all the other sins in the Bible. And I could see where somebody would want to retreat to a place where they can hear other messages. A lot of pastors uh, spew out just this sin because they know that they'll get a response from it to me. And they also know that other people will agree with them. And it's just easy to put in your sermon. It really is. Instead of really diving in and teaching a lesson on it, it's easy to just make this a part of your sermon as a part of sin that Jesus doesn't like and to go on from there and to keep going. A lot of people don't like to do the research. A lot of people do not like to, um, to really speak biblically and give a really good biblical lesson and so a lot of time you get a lot of pastors who are talking from their head and from their brains and that's all that comes up and that's sad and so I always struggle with the inclusive part but I most definitely understand why it's needed now because people are just not that bright <laughs> uh, <laughs> people are just not that bright and just don't want to take out the time for that you know of course there are a lot of pastors that talk to talk about a lot of sin but it seems to be it really does seem to be a big emphasis on the gay and bisexual transgender lifestyle um it would be hard for me to go to a church where they only talked about fornication um and that's something that i've always struggled with and i haven't done very well i've been very repentive about it but i haven't done it well and it would be hard for me to sit inside a church every week and every other week or something and hear that come out. Am I repentant of it? I am. Am I sorry about it? I am. Um, but it would just be hard for me to sit in there. Now, I'm not saying that we need to open up churches for different things that we're going through. But I am saying that I see the need for these type of churches. And, and in, real, in reality, there may not even be a, a, a need to not hear that in a sermon. But just... Biblically speaking, some people may see some of these scriptures different than what we see them as. And so we go to a church that we find comfortable. And so there is a need for a church like Pillar. Okay. So, like I stated, go to the church, see what it's like, fellowship with these people. And I'm sure that you will have a worship time, that you will lift your hands to God. And that is the, the main thing is we should be able to worship God together. We should be able to celebrate his life and his death together without any problems. Shouldn't be worried about who's going to look at who, who's going to touch who, who's going to do this. Go to worship. And that's exactly what they're doing there. They just are worshiping. There's nothing else there. I don't know what else you would be thinking about at this time, but your eyes should be fixed on Jesus. And so I loved, love, love this church. I loved Bishop Phyllis. I most definitely will continue to support their ministry and continue to love on God's people, which is what we're supposed to do. But I do want this to be an open discussion. And so if you felt like it was a bad decision for me to go, then let me know. If you felt like it was a good decision, then let me know. If you have had, if you are a, a gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender person, and you've had difficulty in the church, let me know below what some of the things that you felt uh, made you leave church or made you go to a different church or made you decide to go to an inclusive church. 
let me know that as well. Uh, Christians, let me know why you haven't uh, supported an inclusive church or what is the issue behind the reason why <clears throat> you don't support LGBTQ ch churches or have never been. I'd love to hear some thoughts and opinions. Let's talk about this. Let's talk it out. Let's be respectful, but let's talk it out. Let's engage in conversation. That's what exactly what I want this video and all of the other church videos to to be about uh once again i went to pillar of love fellowship located at 7438 west 62nd place in summit illinois i will leave their website information below pastor pastor once again is bishop phyllis um i completely enjoyed this church guys completely enjoyed this church Let's start a discussion. Let's talk this thing out. And I will see you next week for episode five of Sitting in Yo Pew. Please like, comment, and subscribe as well. This is Old School Heart, a.k.a. Tiffany, if you are watching this on Facebook. Have a good day.